Okay, so let me tell you a story about the empathy. So based on official Polish online market ranking called Megapanel, abcsdrowie.pl, which can be translated to uh, abchealth.pl, is the leader among uh, other health websites. We have two and a half real millions of real users visiting our site each month. And uh, moreover, we are, we are also the largest content, data, content base, uh, health content base in the internet because we created about 300,000 of uh, health uh, pieces of health content. So basically we have articles about uh, everything uh, from illnesses to uh, pregnancy advice to tips on losing weight to skincare to even uh, suggestions how to exercise for people with uh, back spine problems. Um, so basically in here you will find everything you need to know about, about, uh, about health and the healthy lifestyle. So we are really good at it. Uh, we have also forums, uh, support groups, uh, doctors' rankings, and so on. And all of this add up, and it's the reason why Google loves us. And month after month, it sends us millions of uh, users that are interested in uh, finding in, in uh, some in information about their health. But so it's not bad, right? But until recently, there was one thing that was our biggest problem. And what I mean is the engagement and the loyalty of our users. Because although our pages were visited, were visiting by, by a lot of people, uh, they didn't in fact spend a lot of time on them. They didn't in fact particip participate into discussions. They didn't add in m many comments. They didn't explore the website. They came as soon as they went and they were with us just for a glimpse of moment and afterwards we were forgotten. So. I think it could sound like the best dream job for every UX designer, right? Because what else to do than just, well, start, start improving the website, right? Let's take all our fancy stuff, our fancy tools like A-B testing, card sorting, user testing, design patterns, interactive prototypes, and so on, and start improving the website. Well, we ran into this trap too, and over the past few years, we accomplished two, to, uh, two total, total redesigns. We put a lot of UX effort, a lot of UX work to make our site look uh, cleaner, easier, more intuitive, more interesting, just better. But did it work? Well, just a little. In fact, the parameters we follow, such as time spent on site, such as bounce rates, such as pages per visit, they didn't really increase. They they change, of course, but only in a small extent. And we started to understand. Uh, to, to, and we started to understand that, well, we are doing something wrong, and we need to take a look on it. We, we have to dig into it, into that. And we decided to um, to make a research, and uh, we analyzed the market and did a set of qualitative and quantitative research, and. What we realized was that we came upon an iceberg, and what we saw with w was just the tip of it. But, well, firstly, at the beginning, the data wasn't so surprising. We found out, for example, that, eight, that 90, almost 90% 90 of Polish users seek for health info information online. That, that means that, basically, when we realized first symptoms of, of some illness, that's where we go in the first place, to the Internet. Um, the official mar panel mark, uh, the official ranking um, in Poland, Mega Panel, showed that uh, uh, the total reach of all health websites in Poland grew by 60% over the five, few five over the past five years. So it was very good news for us, very good information. In uh, in um, December 2013, nine and a half million of Polish users were visiting health websites. So the market was very good, was, was big, and our perspectives are, w were looking good. But we still didn't have any data about why our website kept having such low engagement parameters. Mm, so we decided, because we didn't know what we are doing wrong, we decided to take a look on our rivals. Uh, and uh, and um, among a variety of other market research, we did also, we measured also the spontaneous brand awareness. Because if 9.5 million of Polish users were visiting health-related websites, then they surely 
uh, must have some favorite ones, some favorite websites, and it probably reflects in, um, in higher engagement rates on this site. So all we have to do is just identify these favorite ones, uh, take a look on them, carry out good, good con conclusions, and, well, start improving our website. Yeah, in theory, it's, uh, it's quite easy, but the data was quite surprising. Uh, well, it showed that Polish users had completely no idea which health, uh, which health website they use. Uh, in fact, the overwhelming majority, as you see, 91% of uh, Polish users weren't able to name any brand, and a part of the others named some brand that simply didn't exist, like zdrowie.pl, which is health.pl, or uh, twoje.zdrowie.pl, which is yourhealth.pl. So it looks quite clearly for, to, to us that uh, the market is big, but it's still waiting for a leader to appear. And, well, maybe, maybe we are doing everything right. Maybe the lack of engagement is just a, just a part of the long adoption process. Maybe Polish users weren't used to have their online health brand, yes? Because, well, presently what they are doing is, is they simply putting their uh, symptoms into the search engine and, well, they, they select uh, sites that suit the, suits them best. So maybe all we have to do is just keep, cal keep calm, uh, be patient, and uh, do our job. And as soon as the market will be, will be more stable, our parameters should increase, right? Yeah, it, and, well, this, is, this was the moment that w when we possibly could have stopped and went home. But you can also interpret this data differently. Maybe Polish users need something that didn't exist on the market. So we decided to wait with firm conclusions and uh, keep digging deeper. And especially interesting proved to be uh, our ethnographical research conducted by one of our employee, Emil Tomczuk. Um, respondents in this research told us that there is a problem. They admitted that there is a problem with health information online. They, they told that it was about the form. Because while you're searching the web, uh, you came upon sites that contains with articles about uh, illnesses, treatments, uh, symptoms, and so on. And you might think it's totally normal, it's totally okay. Yes, but our interviewees told us that they often have ha had such a feeling that their own particular medical concerns, the medical problems and symptoms are so special and unique that any article about specific problem, even if detailed, couldn't simply resolve their doubts. And if you think about it, that, it, that, it does a lot, a lot of sense. Because imagine you have a fever, right? And of course, you can find a lot of information about fever in, in the internet, about its uh, reasons, treatment, and so on. But who cares if you are the only one who know that it's not just a fever. It's the third fever in this month and you also have had some stomach problems two, two weeks ago and some headaches and even recently you have had some light rush on your skin and tell me how to find online the information if this fever that you're experiencing right now is serious enough to go seek uh, professional help, professional consultation and well, that's how real life cases work but it's not the only problem because mm, our interview has told us also in this research that even if they found the article that suits them, that is right, they have problems with understanding it. Because articles in internet, health articles, are both too short, are either too short, so therefore too imprecise, or too deep and too overwhelming. What is important here is that mm, for our respondents, it was very hard uh, in both cases to carry out good conclusions based on this kind of articles. They often told us that they often had such a feeling that they would like to ask about this and that, but, well, website doesn't talk, right? They only display text. So at this stage, at this moment, we started to see the big picture. We started to, um, to connecting the dots. It was evident for us that uh, the existing health websites on the market are not so perfect. It didn't mean that the market or the users are not ready we felt that something is missing here. Something is missing on the market. There is a lack on the market. But, well, we still hadn't, no, hadn't enough data to prove it. So we decided to sl slightly change our perspective. And instead of researching the internet, and instead of researching 
uh, the behavior of Polish users, we decided to take a look how Poles in general deal with public health care. And here began the breakthrough. Because we found out that approximately two doctors in Poland are responsible for 1,000 citizens. And it's the smallest number in the European Union. Because the average in the European Union is by 50% higher. Let me... In Ustroń... Oh, well, correct, where it is. Uh, okay, in Ustroń, uh, in Ustroń you need to wait four years to visit physiotherapist. In Słupsk, you need to, uh, if you want to visit um, a cardiologist, you, you need to wait 330 days. And at the same time, you need to wait in Bydgoszcz for an optician appointment. And well, all this data grabs you by the guts, right? But it's a typical, it's a typical reality, uh, everyday reality of the typical poll. Even for, for, a health, uh, or for a family doctor, we need to wait on average a week. And we thought, okay, if the queues to uh, visit public doctor in Poland are so long, then Poles must, must, surely, must, be, sh must be surely visiting private doctors, right? Well, that's not the case, because we found out that the typical poll is capable of spending just, okay, just 46 and 60 slots uh, for, for, an, uh, for, a medical, uh, for a medical services during the month. And unfortunately, if you want to meet, uh, if you want to meet um, a private specialist, you need to sp spend no less than 100 slots. So what's the consequence? Well, the consequence is that four and a half million of Poles didn't use any medical service during the, the, during the year, despite their need. And this data goes quite well with the data we acquired through Central Statistical Office. These are the most important reasons why people resign from doctor visits. And as you may see, over the half of the respondents told, uh, answered of not going to a doctor because of lack of money and because of the length of the queue. And these two problems combined together, I mean poor availability of doctors and lack of money, leads us to very alarming result. Very alarming result that almost 80% of Poles are forced to use self-treatment. And 50% of Poles, 50% uh, of Poles takes medicines without even professional consultation. And if you, if you remember the data that I presented you at the beginning of my presentation about the online Polish health market, I will, I will remind you. 90% of Poles seek for information about, about health in the internet and uh, um, nine and a half million of Polish uh, of us vi are visiting health-related websites each month. And this number, these numbers continue to grow. But so you might think, what's a, what's a growing market? What's a big good good growing market yes but all these numbers all these numbers have completely different connotations with the in the context of the data that i presented you today because it turns out that for a large number of polish citizens the internet is just an equivalent of something that is unachievable for them doctor visits and internet is no longer just a supplementary source of the knowledge about health it's often the first and the only, no only source of the knowledge about health. And as you may remember from our recall, from our, uh, from our ethnographic of, uh, research that we conducted, it showed that the content, health content in the internet, is very, us very often unclear and or inadequate for its users. And to complete this gloomy picture, it's very easy to say, uh, very important to say, sorry, uh, that um, uh, the large part of the health content in the internet is just simply unreliable. And this is the problem that is often pointed out by Polish doctors. For example, Dr. Andrzej Kajetanowicz during the 8th World Congress of Polish Physicians said that even in such ordinary cases as fever in children, only three of the 22 websites found through Google search contained accurate information. So, let me summarize. Millions of people, million, millions of Poles, cannot consult a doctor. It's too expensive or it takes too long time. So they are forced to heal themsem themselves on their own. So it's, and it's quite natural that they're trying to find relevant information about this healing process in the internet. But well, they can't find relevant information because you, uh, very often their websites are, are wrong, are unclear, or they can't simply understand them. So it's quite depressing, isn't it? 
But all this data helped us to put ourselves into the shoes of our users, to open our eyes, because until, re until now we were thinking month after month about completely, completely irrelevant issues like should we delete the left side menu or should we promote more lifestyle content instead of contextual suggestions, uh, tree architecture or graph model. It was be because we had no clue about the real needs of our users. We used just simple intuition and simple stereotypes. And we thought it's so simple. Well, people just searching for information about health in the internet, and well, we deliver this kind of information, right? Easy. Well, the reality proved to be far more complex than that. So, yeah. So we finally came, with, uh, to came up to, with conclusions that what is missing on the market is a service that gives patients the ability to easy contact with doctor in fast and cheap way. And we asked about it, a representative group of polls that asked about if they would use such a service, consultations with doctors um, in, in the internet, via the internet. And let the results speak from the, for themselves, yes? Uh, so as you may see, almost 60% of them answered strongly yes. Another 30, almost 35% answered probably yes, so cool. And we decided we will give all the polls the possibility to ask an anonymously ask three questions to doctors, to psychologists, and to dietitians, and we will guarantee that the answer will come in less than 24 hours. And we, it, this is what, how we started the completely new stage in the history of abcsdravi.pl, which continues today. And uh, we use we used our potential that we managed to build so far, and on this foundation we built something completely new. From typical online publisher, we are now becoming a provider of the unique service. And you know what, it really works, because this, the, mm, this, the project started off about half a year ago, and well, we already managed to answer 55,000 of questions. Uh, and actually, actually I, I uh, prepared this slide uh, about few few days ago so uh, this number is actually 57,000 of questions so go online today and uh, try the service it's it's a completely free service you don't have to pay anything for it just ask many questions just ask as many questions as you want but i'm also convinced that you are probably interesting interested in uh, how all this effort that we put into the learning how uh, wh what are the needs of our users how all this effort has resulted in, in, in the um, in, in improvements in our engagement parameters. So let me provide you with some numbers. Users who add questions perform by 300% more, more page views than the others. They spend by 600% more time on site. The bounce rate in this group of, of uh, users is lower, less, uh, is, uh, is lower by 50%, 50 percent, and we have 50% more returning visitors. So it's impressive, isn't it? And we, well, we are proud. You know, I'm I'm supporter of the holistic approach to user experience, and I believe that that in 2014, you know, you don't really have to convince anyone that uh, user experience is much more than just uh, you know prototypes, mockups, and user tests. In fact, a lot of UX practitioners right now believe that our work as UX UX guys starts at this stage of the def of defining. Uh, company's uh, business, of analysis of the business, or uh, at this stage of creating new product ideas. But is this sufficient answer? Well, I would go a step further. In my opinion, the real user experience, in fact, human experience, it starts much, much more earlier. It starts from the empathy. It starts from people, and it starts from their needs. Unfortunately, well, Unfortunately, the empathy sounds much more trivial than skeuomorphism, right? Much more old-fashioned than flat design, right? Less creative than design thinking. And definitely less impressive than parallax effect, right? And, but this is, this is the source of the problem. As you probably all remember, the old friend of, of, all, our, of, all, of, of all the designers in the world, right? I mean, Steve Jobs, he used to say, that the true simplicity in design is terribly difficult to achieve. Yeah, and, and this is the same with empathy, and the same is with uh, understanding human needs. If you want to understand them, understand them well, you need to f dig far deeper than you think. And unfortunately, during this process, this digging process, is very easy 
to carry out wrong, or wrong conclusions based on not enough observations and not enough observ in information. And the funny thing, the funny thing is that we are p particularly capable and vulnerable of doing such an error. I don't know if you know um, the this guy, Edward de Bono. Edward de Bono is a British uh, physician, a world authority in the field of uh, creative and lateral thinking. He, he is lecturer at Oxford, Harvard, and Cambridge, and his methods have been used by, gi by giants like ABM, uh, ExxonMobil, Shell, uh, British Airways, AT&T, and so on. He introduced a term called intelligence trap. And so listen up, because it's all about us. Uh, he wrote, he wrote, you will probably agree that it is generally assumed that intelligence goes hand in hand with thinking. Well, in fact, it's not. People who are genuinely intelligent can mount very convincing arguments that support almost any point of view, usually, unfortunately, the first that will come to their minds. So, in fact, they are trapped in by their own intelligence because they are starting to support some thesis just because they are intelligent enough to defend them. And fa let's face it, we are doing it all the time, right? And unfortunately, unfortunately, the first assumptions about human needs are very often wrong. This what seems to be a real problem is very often just a tip of an iceberg. And if you will be working on your product without fully understanding the needs of its users, your efforts will be wasted and you will be frustrated that you can't achieve your goals just as we were frustrated by our engagement par parameters. So remember that everything starts from empathy and everything starts from understanding human needs. So, keep your eyes wide open and don't be fooled by your intelligence. Thank you. <laughs>